Hi guys, so you are welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I'm A1 and I'm a first time class student of Black Jack Bella University. So if you are here to subscribe, please do well to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified anytime I drop videos. So I'll be making a series of, of videos about YEG Practica in which I've made a video on, on I've made a video on physics and biology. So today is the last part which is the chemistry aspects so if you are yet to watch the other ones please and please go and check my other videos i'm sure you will find them very helpful so let's dive into the main video make sure you watch it and now for the chemistry aspects it's chemistry practical is divided into three practical is divided into three in which we have the fundamental analysis or quantitative analysis the second one is the qualitative or sort analysis why the third one is the alternative aspect whereby you are not going to practicalize anything, you are not going to experiment anything, they just give you questions, they assume you don't it right, just tell them the answer. So that's the third aspect, and that's the aspect that students find very like very very hard. Or I'm going to give you tips on how you can get over them and be able to answer at least, even if not all the questions they ask in that part, but 70 percent of the questions you will meet. Now, let's talk about the first aspect. Under volumetric analysis or quantitative analysis, the like the most important thing, just like the physics price that I talked about, the most important and first thing to know is your title value. That is what you experiment, your title value, all, all, the, value, all the values you get, that's what you use to continue. And this title value, you must make sure that there is no mistake there. Now, what are the things to know so that there will be no mistake? Is that you should also also ensure that you, will, you should use pencil first. Use pencil to write out using pencil to write out your um title file. That is the values you get. That is, in the, if you make mistake, you can correct them easily. Then using biro at the first instance, then final file you get to make it of your biro to trace it. Another thing that you have to follow is your measurements and your apparatus. You must make sure that your apparatus you maintain all the precaution, all the necessary precautions. Make sure you make use of the right apparatus, just like the um, volume of the volume of the pipette. So you must make sure that it's um, that it's usually to either twenty five cm cube or twenty cm cube. So make sure it is the one that is recommended from your teacher that you use, or the one I mean the one that it's in, that is in the question. And you must note it the old exam. Now another thing that you have to note is your indicator. Which type of indicator? I did they actually I mean which type of uh, for you to determine your indicator you all know what you are going to do just check do you have a strong acid or weak base or whatever so know the type of indicator you are going to use don't go and use a wrong indicator and the number of drops of your indicator should not be more than two to three that is very necessary like it should not be more than two to three so if it's even normally it should be two if it's more than two to three then you will start to get um bad results or whatever so and by the time you are now releasing your acid into the, the time you are now releasing your acid into the chemical flux and you are expecting the color to change you have to place it like a type or a white paper under it so that you can easily detect the color so that you won't use too much of acid before you now discover that it has changed and you have to be shaking it i'm sure you will have done all the all those things while um, still in school so please note all those things just make sure that your color change like you are very conversant with it don't waste too much of acid on it and you'll be expecting the color to change then you shake it after a kind of drop shake after drop shake after a drop shake because if you are not shaking and you are just releasing the acid you just discover that your acid is just coming down then by the time you check the um volume of acid you, you discover that you used like more than enough acid so those are the things that you have to note for volumetric analysis then after that you calculate your average volume i'm sure you know how to do that your volumes that are very close so those are not the ones that are far let's assume you have 23.5 then 23.4 now have 29.6 so the one that you are going to use is the 23.5 and 23.4 then you add them together what they are two so you'll find the average divided by two and if you have um three values just like 23.40 23.30 then 23.20 um, you add the three together and then divided by three so that's how to get your volume of acid so all the necessary all other necessary questions are 
what you should know. They may ask for your concentration. They may ask for concentration of acid in gram per gram cube, concentration of acid in mole per gram cube, molar mass of acid, concentration of base in mole per gram cube, concentration of base in gram per gram cube, or well, molar mass of base and other necessary questions. They may ask you for the number of hydrogen ions in which you are going to make use of. You have a gradual constant. Then, I think those are the necessary things that they may have. Unless if you also if your question like if the acid you are given or base you ask an unknown um, element, let's assume instead of H2SO4 now you are given X2SO4. Then at the end of the day they ask you to find X. So those ones are what you should know before going to your for your exam for fundamental analysis and quantitative analysis. Well, related to analysis or sort of analysis, I don't actually have much to say. All these things are like they are practical. So. You should follow them carefully. It's not like physics that require much um, precautions actually. For chemistry, they will ask you to do this, do that. Now, for this qualitative analysis, you have to follow the procedures very well. Like, it's very important because it's what they ask you to do that like, you are going to do. They, they ask you to add um, NHTD in drug, then in SS. Then the first thing is that you've already added it in SS. So, you discover that you've actually done rubbish. So, you have to follow the procedures very well. Whatever they ask you to do, you should do. In drop in excess. If they ask you to eat, eat. If they ask you to leave it for like five minutes, don't eat and just write your inference straight. Just make sure you check the question. In most cases, after eating, they do ask you to leave it to rest. So if you leave it for it to uh, cool, like to cool down, the color will make my later change. So those are the things that you have to note for qualitative. I think that's all I can say for. For the alternative aspect, I don't actually want this video to be too long. So for the alternative aspect, what are the things that they do ask? They ask for your apparatus and uses. They ask for drying agents. They ask for compounds. They, 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 they give you compounds, like two common separation techniques that they do ask is sublimation. At times, they may ask you to draw it. Like I'm talking about fractional distillation common ones and for the separation um, for the drying agents and all other ones so i think this this can't they do ask for this can't so please just note the next few ones that normally are. that's why the past question is also very very important go through the number three questions like it may be in the money of your exam self so the money like when after waking up you can just go to your school early, very early then sit down with the past question just check the mostly asked questions in that number three I'm very sure you will find that for my own exam, I don't have any problem with the number three because they are mostly what I've seen before. So the more you study, the more you'll be able to tackle the question. So I think that's all for this video and that's all for the um, series of this wide practical stuff. So if you are going generally, if you are going for your exam, make sure I mean practical, make sure you go in with the necessary things. So that you will not end up going out, um, getting to the exam hall and borrowing some things. And don't forget that your practical carries test five percent, and it's going just it's not going to last for two hours. I think it should be two hours, so it's not going to take much of your time. And these two hours is going to be like it's going to determine a lot. So give it all your best, do the best things, and I wish you success. We'll see you in my next video. Bye.